Hello everyone and welcome to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed this habitat. I don't personally think it's my best habitat, but I quite like the views you get um, of the habitat. I don't. I think there's always a part of the zoo where the habitat might not be up to date. And I think this could be a habitat which can be seen to have maybe they want to do renovations to it, um, make them larger maybe, I don't know. But yeah, if you could please leave a like, subscribe, and if you want to comment for some feedback or if you want to be named after an animal. Um, I know people like giraffes. I'm not one of them people that absolutely love them. They're not my favourite animal, but I do like them. I do think they're good. Uh, yeah, i uh, see you on next episode where I'm going to make the white rhino habitat. And see you then. Bye. video to the part where I talk a little bit about the facts about the ostrich and the giraffe. So I'll start with the ostrich. Ostriches are the largest flight, largest bird I think, yeah largest birds, uh, yeah well they're flightless, they don't fly um, and they are very 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 big. They belong to the family of flightless birds which did include the kiwi, which is actually part of the family of the largest, just like the islands, which is New Zealand, which had the largest bird, which was the elephant bird, and that the subspecies would be a kiwi, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, they are the most unique um, flightless bird, I'd say, because you've got your emus and rias, but these are the only big bird, the wild bird, which are native to Africa. Um, they get predated on by the striped hyena, which I did last episode, jackals and lions. They are the largest bird and they grow to an astounding three metres tall, which is very, very, very tall. And they weigh about two full grown men, which is really, really big. Um, but yeah, my thought was that our ostriches are relatively small ones or small smaller subspecies um i know there's two there's like the somalian one which is a more desert one and then you've got the sub-saharan africa one i think i want i want to be the sub-saharan african one rather than the somalian one 
because Somali lives in the desert, R1 doesn't, I don't think. Um, but yeah, they look very different. This is called sexual dimorphism, where the males look different to the females. The females have this very bland, monotone sort of colour, so it's mostly brown with a little bit of grey. And they've got very, very petite heads with big eyes, which allows them to have this really good eyesight. And the males have the same eyes but and the same head, but they are black and white feathers. Um, but in Wildwood Zoo, we have a leucistic uh, ostrich, which is very rare to find. I, I want to name it something, but I can't think of a name. Uh, but yeah, in Wildwood Zoo, our ostrich... Well, our bird collection, obviously, if we had aviaries, I'd add many of them, because I think in zoos, genuinely, they have a lot of birds and a lot of aviaries, um, and I think it's quite a big part of the zoos, and it's a bit sad that Planet Zoo hasn't got them, but, yeah. Um, so the two birds we're going to have would be the penguin species, which I think I'm going to do the little penguin in the Australian area, and... Yeah, the ostrich, which is going to be the other one. Um, yeah, funny enough, the ostrich, although they're very quick, they only have two toes, which is something that dinosaurs had, and their feet, like, not sounding weird right, but the the big birds, like the cassowary, and just the birds like that, have really prehistoric feet, and they are seen to be the most prehistoric, like, adapted foot. Because obviously birds are the closest ascend descendant from dinosaurs, so yeah. But if you're wondering why the ostrich can't fly, it is due to the structure of their breast bones. The flying birds have a curved stern sternums that allow them to fly, which is, I'm pretty sure they're bones. The bones are hollow or something, but the ostriches are have like the sternums which are flat, not curved, which means they are grounded. I think I mean that the the wings, um, but yeah. But ostriches are heavy with their well, they got relatively small wings compared to their size, so that doesn't help. But yeah, that's why they don't fly. They also not only they the largest bird, but they lay the largest eggs. They produce an egg which weighs up to three pounds and measures half a foot long. And the only ever egg that was larger is the ones from the dinosaurs. Um, but yeah, there's not many animals in the world that can lay an egg. I'm pretty sure the biggest egg laid by body mass would be the kiwi. You can search up a picture, um, because I'm not going to do a kiwis in my zoo. Um, but I might do a kiwi if anyone wants them, put that in the comments. Um, I don't really like building houses, so I don't really want to build a nocturnal house. So it's going to have to be a outdoor area with like a, a big indoor area. Um, but yeah... The kiwi, I'm pretty sure, has the biggest egg compared to its body mass. Because it, like, takes up their whole body. It's massive. I don't understand how that works. But, yeah. As I said, they get predated upon hyenas, lions, and jackals. But their main defense is their kick. Now, these kicks would be able to kill a lion. Um, so, you've got to be very, very careful. But their legs are, like, really armed. And their toes, as I said... They've got these massive, massive claws. And, yeah, I wouldn't want to go near an ostrich. And they're really aggressive as well. They're not, like, you know. But, yeah, the ostriches form groups called herds. And there's about 10 to 12 in a group. But they have been known to live in groups of about 100 of them. But lions, like, males will compete for control and dominance over their own herd. So, unlike ostriches... Well, unlike lions, ostriches have a very mixed um, thingy. So there might be like 100 females, but it's not going to be owned by one male. It's going to be multiple groups with the male. But yeah, if you've ever seen, I'm sure you've seen a documentary with the, or in real life, I haven't. But if you've seen the display of the males and how they dance for the females with their wings, and it is brilliant, they just jump and like, shimmy yeah they're funny um but yeah they are very resilient to environmental changes so they're not very 
like affected by climate change they're very used to them drastic changes between night and day so they're quite easy to regulate the temperature um but yeah they're very clever animals their their feet actually like how their legs work means how they can trap heat within them i better hurry this up because we're not going to get to the giraffes in time but the ostriches they have really long thick eyelashes they've got probably the coolest eyelashes of any animal elephants got pretty good ones but yeah the oh wow i didn't know this o ostriches lay about a dozen eggs while females like the more dominant females can lay more eggs um but a dozen is about it says other females will lay about two to six eggs so i'd imagine yeah, it's quite a lot of eggs. Comparing the size of them, I wasn't expecting that. I like a kiwi only lays one, for example. Um, yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, um, the male and the females both take turns incubating the eggs. Uh, some other animals, mostly the male takes care of the eggs while the females goes and do whatever. I've seen a documentary, I think it was an ostrich. Or a rhea, I think it was an ostrich. The poor male sat on the egg and the female went running away to get food. And it it was the male nearly died to sit on these eggs. Um, yeah, it's mental. I can't believe it. But the chicks grow really, really quickly. Um, so the eggs will take about a month and a half. And then the chicks will grow at a rate of a foot per month. And leave the nest in just a few days. Which is, that's ridiculous. Um... The chicks are only babies when they leave the nest. They're not fully grown. Uh, there's not really much, I don't think. Um, they're most they're quite abundant in captivity, so they're not like they're not threatened at all. Um, but yeah, I don't know what zoos they're all found at. Um, but yeah, there are some like wrong things that's happened. They do these ostrich racing. Oh, what's this? Oh my god. Oh my god. I found a video of ostrich racing. <laughs> I can't believe that. They are actually used in it racing. It's fairly common in Africa. Um, that's funny. I'll have to see <laughs> where that is. That's so wrong, I find. I don't know why. Yeah, I'll move on to the giraffe now, which is probably the more famous in planet zoo we've got the reticulated giraffe there are i think nine subspecies of giraffe in africa uh there's only giraffes in africa but the reticulated giraffe have these very sharp very sharp edges to their patterns I and mean, they're mostly brown with with their white line separating them they live for about 20 25 years um in captivity that's usually about 30 years um i don't know if they I don't, I don't know what the largest or the oldest one was, but yeah, they're quite uh, spectacular animals. Uh, there's about, there's not many in the world. There's about 16,000 in the world, and they are classified as endangered by the IUCN, so it's quite sad. But I've seen giraffes, but not the reticulated one, I don't think. You usually see the Rothschild giraffe, which is the most abundant. But yeah, the giraffe is like many herbivores in africa do what they do most of their time is eat so they spend 13 hours about 13 hours a day eating um obviously they eat from trees with their long neck that's what they're built for and they're active both day and night and they sleep uh, they sleep on the floor obviously but they are known to sleep standing up uh that's quite interesting that they take naps rather than doing like they won't do it more than like an hour or more than like a couple of hours they will only do it for about an hour maybe sleeping um but yeah they don't really care about males and females they just kind of do it but the males usually have their females um but the females usually they're not too bossy with each other they will if there's if there's like a one piece of young they will protect the young like most hoof stock, most hoof stock will protect their young, um, but giraffe is one of the few that actually 
will protect it when there's like a line on the loose or something. Um, but yeah, it takes about just over a month, uh, just over a year, about 450 days for a giraffe to give birth. Um, they only they usually produce one, but there was some documentation of two being born. The they will actually give birth standing up. And the calf will, will be standing within 20 minutes, about 5 to 20 minutes after birth. Which is like most, most hoof stock, which is like, or ungulates, which are very, very good at standing up. Us humans and general monkeys, oh, well, monkeys don't usually stand on two legs, but us, we spend ages, we take like over a year to learn how to walk. Which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, as I said, they're endangered and they're always decreasing. They are threatened by habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, and poaching. The last counted individuals of reticulated giraffes were about 15,000 individuals, um, and there's about 11,000 mature individuals. Uh, so yeah, their list is endangered, which is quite sad. And as I said, they eat on trees, and the reason why this affects them is because when the trees kind of get chopped down, as the town to get larger there's not many trees in the savannah so they do struggle finding food so it's quite a, a serious situation because they can't they can't eat the ground and one of my favorite things about the giraffe is how they drink they do that weird position where they kind of put their teeth forward and keep their make sure they don't fall forward i'm not too sure if i've ever seen a giraffe fall over i'd imagine they do that but yeah you would be surprised that they obviously live in savannas and woodlands but and the floodplains like the wetlands and the Serengeti but they are also known to live in tropical rainforest and I don't think that's known much but I don't know in game if they allow the tropical environment to be brought in with them but I've never done like a Congo tropical zoo yet so that'd be quite interesting in the future if I could do that. But yeah, I'll see you at the end of the video, and say goodbye then. See ya. today's video i hope you enjoyed this habitat i don't personally think it's my best habitat but i quite like the views you get um of the habitat i don't i think there's always a part of the zoo where the habitat might not be up to date and i think this could be a habitat which can be seen to have maybe they want to do renovations to it um make them larger maybe i don't know but yeah if you could please leave a like subscribe and if you want to comment for some feedback or if you want to be named after an animal um, i know people like giraffes i'm not one of them people that absolutely love them they're not my favorite animal but i do like them i do think they're good uh yeah i uh, see you on next episode where i'm gonna make the white rhino habitat and see you then bye